RWDI has uh, always had a firm rooting in taking very complex or novel challenges and, and trying to solve them. And one of them was, as I understand it, uh, the Sky Dome, one of the first retractable roofs, or if not the first retractable roof stadium, and in a climate where snow was going to be a big factor. huge mass of roofs, uh, you, your building codes don't stand up, uh, so you, you have to get very uh, creative. And uh, you know, Peter was ideal for that. And um, at the same time, one of the big issues with those big arch structures is uh, what's called unbalanced snow loads. So um, you got a, you got a barrel a bolt like that, and if the wind blows from this direction, carrying all the snow and it builds up over here, then that creates an unbalanced load. So, uh, um, actually, with Scott Gamble, I worked on, on uh, the project and actually developed the first method for coming up with uh, uh, snow loads on a, on a roof. And we would go into the wind tunnel and uh, take measurements, um, simultaneous measurements over the entire roof of, uh, for any given wind direction. Where are the wind patterns? What are the wind patterns on the, on the roof? Now, the water flume is good at telling you where drifting is going to happen. The sand will drift in places where the real snow will in the water. And you can kind of measure the depth of the drift, but it's difficult to relate that to uh, something that's going to happen you know, once every 10 years, once every 50 years. How often will it happen? And so there were some <coughs> qualitative aspects to it. It was difficult to say you should design this part of the roof for so many kilopascals based on our test results. But I figured there might be a way if we went into the computer simulation combined with the water flume and the wind tunnel of predicting snow loading quantitatively and giving structural designers actual numbers. Were it not for the programming skills of Scott Gamble, who's one of the other principals of WDI, I think he's now retired, but the combination of me writing out the theory and Scott programming it and implementing it, we were able to get results. I mean, this, this was very much the first one and uh, it was uh, a huge effort to uh, figure out the science. Uh, it, it would be easy to come up with some very simple loads on the roof which would overestimate everything. I mean, there's 11,000 tons of steel in that roof. And you, you don't want to have, you don't want to overestimate the loads. You don't want to underestimate them either. So you really have to do, pay particular attention. Uh, but Peter had the brains to, to, to work with all of that. He's, uh, he's in my view, the, the world's most significant wind engineer. So. Because it was the first big retractable roof stadium in North America and so some of the issues which come up when you've got a, a movable structure hadn't really been looked at before so we kind of set the standard for doing that. So that, uh, that project um, incredibly unique um, and um, quite frankly it, it opened so many doors for us to do so many other stadium projects all over the U.S. Uh, to the point where almost all of them um, we were involved and that includes arenas as well. So developing that uh, snow load uh, prediction method and how to deal with uh, um, wind loads on big roofs uh, became a very unique uh, capability of, uh, of our WDI. Just thinking back to the tools that they had at their disposal back then, uh, it's, it really is a, a testament to the great engineering that they were able to do to design a structure like the Sky Dome. And so because we've spanned the whole world in terms of Stadia projects, we've also spanned uh, many different climate regimes. So uh, there's a very a uh, big dichotomy between something like uh, a cold weather climate in Toronto or, or 
Minnesota uh, versus uh, an arid desert climate like some of the stadia that we worked on in the Middle East. You know, blowing sand is not a challenge that we need to deal with in Toronto. We have snow, but blowing sand is a big design challenge in, in a place like the Middle East uh, for stadia design. You know, the hot, uh, the hot climates obviously have many design factors that, that need to be incorporated to ensure things like patron comfort, uh, athlete heat stress, uh, the ability to grow natural turf, and those are all things that RWDI has uh, contributed to on, on Stadia around the world. When you think about Stadia, um, you know, they're, they're these marquee structures, these big structures. They have some of the boldest architectural elements of, of any structure that you, you sort of see in, in the urban realm. And with that comes uh, big design requirements. So when you start talking about things like the Minnesota Vikings Stadium with its very prominent prow and in a snow climate where snow is going to accumulate and shed off that roof or if, or if you talk about a climate like Los Angeles to promote wind movement through the stadium for, for patron comfort. And so that, that's something that RWDI is so well adapted for on so many uh, facets. You know, we, we can understand the wind, we can understand the aerodynamics of the facility, and the end goal is creating a very sustainable design, no air conditioning. Um, there's, um, uh, there's a lot that goes on in a sports stadium. I don't, I don't think people really think about the care the designers put into the experience of sitting in a, a, a seat. Um, but I, I, what, what we're getting to in the design of Stadia is we can now sort of for every individual seat, tell you what your experience will be on any particular game day. Um, in fact, it's sort of gotten to the point where if someone was interested, we could sort of say, tell us what seat you're in, and we'll tell you whether or not you should be wearing sunglasses, whether or not how much sunscreen lotion you, sh you need, and what kind, of, what kind of shirt you should be wearing. Um, that's how good the modeling is getting, and, and the ability to sort of respond to, to what the environment's going to be. Um, so there's the, there's the how does this, the, um, spectator feel and, and are they comfortable can they see the game but then there's everything so what how the athletes performing can can they perform because it's or are they unable to perform because it's too hot um, are they going to get wind chill on the ground uh, on, the, on the pitch and, and get frostbite all those different factors can now we, we can we can sort that out before the building is even built um, and we sort of see that now where there's a lot more care going into the design of sports data to make sure that the the spectator is comfortable. The level of effort to make sure that something's going to go well at a stadium is actually fairly detailed. Different sports have different goals or, or different requirements and that can certainly influence the type of study or the type of focus that we put into into our assessment. So for example, dealing with a track and field stadium, we're very concerned about how wind that the runners backs could potentially aid them in achieving world records, which is actually a negative thing. And that differs uh, again from, let's say, a baseball stadium where a team might be very interested in learning how the wind behind the baseball is going to carry it out of the stadium and potentially help their home runs. Yeah, one of the, the areas which we developed on stadia, on, on baseball stadiums, was um, studying the flight of the ball. How is wind affect? the ability to hit home runs. People started asking us about that, so we added it to our list of abilities. And that was done using CFD and computer modeling of the spinning ball. And it's quite a sophisticated process. So one of the first um, sports facilities I had a lot to do with was the Texas Rangers ballpark at Arlington. I was able to meet with the designers of, of the Texas Rangers new ball facility and actually kind of convince them that we could help them make a, uh, a really state-of-the-art ballpark. One that was neutral to being a pitcher's park or a hitter's park, which is really what all ball, ball teams are, are after. We worked in the wind tunnel and the water flow just to kind of identify wind flows and patterns and different shapes that the, um, the stadium could take on and how those different shapes and different positions and orientation would change the flow patterns inside the ballpark and ultimately change the flow uh, of the baseball, the travel of the baseball. There was one point where there was a, an article in the New York Times 
<coughs> saying uh, the top four teams had all had studies done at RWDI. What's the secret of these guys up in Guelph, Ontario? That's helping them win games, you know, because we would do a, a report on that stadium. And of course, the team could keep it to themselves if they wanted to, so they knew the win characteristics of their stadium, which could help uh, in choosing, you know, whether they're going to have a strong right field hitter or left field hitter, could help uh, define the strategy of the game.